John Danielson, Director of the Systemic Risk Centre here at LSE, over a million pounds a year from the government. And as far as I understand it, the point of view is collapse happens, relax, it comes along every now and again. Nothing you can do about it. Well, the financial system is inherently risky. And ultimately, we do want banks that take risk. We do want banks that lend to small companies who lend to the real estate, lend to governments. And with that comes the, uh, the recognition that failure happens. And therefore, we want a financial system that with risk we want, and therefore we have to be willing to accept the failures when they come. So you'd ideally like a financial secretary to the Treasury or a Minister of Finance to come out on the media after some calamitous event and say, don't worry, these things happen, it's okay. Do you think they'd last long in politics if they did that? I want them to do something slightly different. I wanted to, to, to come on TV and say, of course, this was an unfortunate event. However, we prepared for this eventuality. We have a set program in place. We are now responding in the best possible way and we will mini minimize the damage to the British economy as a consequence. But one of the things you don't want them to do, so far as I understand it, is to engage in regulation, which is harking back to the past event. You've called regulation, I think, something which holds back economic growth. You've said that it's, at times, fighting the last war. You come across as an enemy of regulation. Would that be fair? That would not be fair, no. The, uh, what I've said in the past is that the problem with financial regulations is that the regulators tend to close the barn after the horse has escaped. So regulation is inherently backward-looking. So you try to regulate against the past crisis, but the bankers, they, then they come along and say, aha, we have the regulations, it's a manual for where the government is looking and where the government is not looking, we're going to take the risk exactly where you're not regulating. If you recognize the fact that regulation is inherently backward looking, you can then create a more resilient and robust financial system. But then you see, I'm listening to you and saying, you seem to want more resilience in the immediate aftermath of a crisis or a collapse. Uh, but you're not going to anticipate what that is either. So you're not regulating about the past, but you're not regulating about the future. So it sounds like the bankers are getting off scot-free. Absolutely not. There are, you do have ways to prevent bad behavior. You do have regulations that work well and are, are, are uh, not, uh, not easy to manipulate. Mm -hmm. The problem is a lot of regulations are based on complicated financial models. And when you have regulation based on complicated yeah. financial models, the advantage is always with the bankers, not with the authorities. If you regulate on, based on more fundamental principles of the economy, then you have a fighting chance. Then you can try to make yeah. the system more resilient. But equally importantly, the authorities have to be ready and know, ex know how to respond to a crisis if and when it happens. You've been talking about models. And one of your more recent papers has identified how different models can produce different results, from which, as I understand your work, you're deducing that models are sometimes actually not dependable in really bad times, and that, to quote you, policymakers should be very careful as relying on a model may lead to costly decision mistakes. So even models are not a guarantee of being able to plan properly, are they? I think the models are the lazy, lazy way out for the regulators because with the models you deceive yourself, you, you tell yourself, I have a way to understand the complexity of the system, while well, all you're doing is you understand a caricature version of the system. And with any caricature, you can have multiple different versions. So if you, if you religiously believe in the model you have, you will end up with suboptimal regulation. And I think the, the mathematization of finance is one of the big uh, causes of the crisis mm -hmm. that we got into. Who's your hero when it comes to economics? Who do you look up to from the past to the present whom you regard as the absolute icon of excellence in the field in which you work? There are two economists that really stand out in my mind. One is John Maynard Keynes, the other is Friedrich Hayek. And I know these are two very different people, but they were both intellectual giants. Uh, Hayek he saw the problem with central planning. He was right here at LSE in 1945 when he wrote his most famous book on, on, on the subject, and he warned us against why you can't centrally plan the economy, which is, I think still holds true today. Mm -hmm. And Keynes told us, on, told us how we can respond to crisis, the weaknesses and strengths of capitalism. John Dallison, thank you very much for subjecting yourself to the gear to grilling. Thank you very much for having me.